snatched Hastinapur from my father, defeated me in a rigged game of Chaucer, then banished me for 13 years, and refused to give one village on my return, tried to burn me in the forest, stripped my wife in his court, used all the tricks of deceit and deception. He has forced me to wage war. O oh, Duryodhan, you are evil, and your army is many times larger, and you have the greatest warriors. I fight for justice, I fight for God. I fight for my self-respect. I refuse to be pushed around. I fight for dharm, for what is right. I fight for my people, I fight for Lord. Hundreds of thousands have joined us. From here we cannot go back. This Kurukshetra will have to choose. Who triumphs, and who falls. Krishna, take my chariot close to enemy. Let me have a look at those who wish to die. Let me see them who crave for my arrows. Have a last look before turning them to dust. O oh Krishna, there is Dron, my Guru. There is Bhishma, my grandfather. There is Duryodhan, my brother. And friends, and family, and sons. O oh Krishna, how am I to fight them? To what purpose am I to kill them? I am losing all my strength. And my mouth is drying out. My entire body is shivering. All my hairs stand on end. My skin feels as if it is burning. The Gandhiv is slipping from my hands. I don't have strength to stand on my legs. My mind is as agitated as it can be. Oh Krishna, I do not want victory. It would be better if they kill me. What good could come out of killing one's own? What use is victory, or fame? What use is kingdom, or wealth? What is the purpose of life, or death? Oh Parth, foolish is your attachment. It can only lead to destruction. Do not surrender yourself to fear. Stand up and destroy the weakness in your heart. You may have a right to choose to die. But what about those who have followed you? Why condemn those in your small army? Why make them suffer for trusting you? O oh Krishna, I worship my Guru Dron. How am I to fire arrows on Bhishma? Is victory better than defeat? I do not know. Is life better than death? I do not know. O oh Krishna, tell me what is right action? What is right conduct? What is my dharma? How should one act? What must one avoid? What life must one lead? And what must one shun? O oh Parth, you are thinking what must not be thought. If you think you are killing, then you are wrong. The elements of life are all inside us. No one can destroy them, they only take another form. The elements of life keep on changing their form. Through childhood, adulthood, and then through old age. On dying, they just take one more appearance. And then get recombined into another body. What is created can never be destroyed. What doesn't exist can never get created. Thus, all our elements are forever. What can you destroy? Who can you kill? Even if you consider death as the end. Still, there is no cause for worry. For death is certain and universal. Any worry about it is foolish. Timeless is non-existence before birth. Forever is non-existence after death. And yet, fools with lives momentary. Keep crying, immersed in delusion. Pleasure, misery, hot and cold. Being sensory illusions, they are ephemeral. The person, who they do not agitate, always attains bliss in life. Profit or loss, victory or defeat. Pleasure or misery, happiness or pain. One who sees them with equanimity, is the one who knows. O oh Parth, you have a right to action. But you are not entitled to its fruits. You are not the sole cause of your actions. Act, but only with detachment. O oh Keshav, tell me about Samadhi. Tell me about the stable mind. How does it act? How does it behave? What should I do to get to that state? O oh Parth, when one shuns all kinds of desires. No agitation in misery, no yearning for pleasure. Then they are free of fear and anger. Then they have a stable mind. No joy in profit, nor sorrow in loss. No delight in victory, nor distress in defeat. No elation in success, nor dejection in failure. No attachment to life, nor fear of death. Success for them is absolute contentment. Which may well be failure for the world. Failure for them is extreme ambition. Which may well be success for the world. They are contented in every moment. Satisfied with themselves, they don't crave success. 
With no destination, they are never lost. Doing or not, does not matter. People push for action, driven by desire. The wise one is devoid of desire. Hence, there is no compulsion to act. No craving for results, no craving for success. Just as a person who is not at all thirsty, has no business in a well full of water. Similarly the wise one, with absolute contentment, is free from business, in world full of desire. Work isn't part of the natural order. Nor is the desire for doing work. Nor are the rewards for the work done. These are illusions created by man. With no ambition, and no desire. When acting or not, does not matter. Contentment superior to action, you say. Then what should be the reason for action? Why act? When one can, not act? Action is important for survival of the body. Also vital it is for survival of the society. To engage in action, is the nature of the living. Acting without attachment, is the only way out. Society is bound by threads of action. Relationships exist because of action. Action creates resources for sustenance. To act is to live, and action is death. Action without attachment leads to bliss. So does refrain from all action, and its fruits. And yet, action is superior to inaction. For it sustains life, society, and humanity. O oh Parth, I have absolutely no desire. No desire means no compulsion to act. And yet, I relentlessly keep acting. What may be the reason for that? I act because people emulate me. If I do not act, others will seize action. Absence of action will break down society. It will lead to destruction of the world. Work is done by the wise, and the foolish. Yet, there are some critical differences. The foolish work craving for results. The wise work in service of the world. The wise work with their bodies, and brains. The mind remains aloof, and does not care. There is no attachment with the results. Success or failure, does not matter. Fulfillment of desires leads to pleasure. Their unfulfillment leads to misery. Both the feelings are extremely ephemeral. One who knows, does not seek them. Those who are unperturbed by desire. Who calmly absorb impulses of yearning. Those who are contented with themselves. They attain the highest bliss.